Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for being so patient. Uh, this is the uh, medal conference for the 100 meters men's final. We have with us our gold medalist, Justin Gatland, our silver medalist, Chris Coleman, and our bronze medalist, Usain Bolt. Um, anyone who would ha like to ask a question, please raise your hand. It must, you must wait for the mic to come, and please state your name and organization. Questions, please? Gentleman in the front row. You got a mic there? Thank you. Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. Uh, for Justin, tell us about your race. Uh, I was in... I was in lane eight, so I couldn't really feel Usain or Christian with lane four and five. So I had to make the best of it. I was like, it's either going to be a good thing or a bad thing for me. Either they won't be able to feel me, or I definitely won't be able to be in the race. So I just got out of the blocks. I ran as hard as I could. I know the second half of the race, you know, um, it's a strong part for Usain and a strong part for Christian. So I tried to make sure I was in the mix. Okay. Uh, could we? I'm sure there's other questions here. Anybody else have a question? We can come back to you if there's not many others. Hi, back here. Uh, you're saying you've had about an hour or two hours to think about this. Uh, you were talking about your start. It had been rough all week. Is there anything else looking back that you could have done differently, that you wish you'd have done differently? That was the only thing, you know what I mean? Um, after the semifinals, um, after I ran the semifinals with, with Coleman, I knew that, listen, if I don't get my start, I'm going to be in trouble, you know what I mean? Um, so that's it. <laughs> I knew it. And when I left the blocks, I was like, ah, I knew I had to try. So I just came out in, just tried my best, you know what I mean? But it wasn't good enough. Is there a question at the back? Microphone's just behind you. Uh, two questions, one for uh, Usain and one for Justin. Uh, Justin, you mentioned um, that you were thinking of uh, heading to uh, Tokyo. How realistic do you think that is? And Usain, uh, there's been a lot of uh, comment on social media about your graciousness uh, in defeat. How much did this hurt? Did it hurt more than any other defeat? And do you regret perhaps coming back after your brilliant um, Olympics last year? Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to take it race by race, year by year. You know, for me... Um, I had some injuries this year. I wasn't able to uh, sprint as hard and as fast as I wanted to. So it just showed me that age is, age is definitely setting in. <laughs> and uh, I just want to be fit for the races that I am going to run for the rest of the season. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't even remember the question. Uh, <laughs> it was, um, do you, A, do you regret uh, coming back after the uh, Olympics? And you're, you were very gracious in defeat. Uh -huh. Even though, was it the most painful defeat in your career, given this was your farewell party? Uh, for me, uh, pff, no. Um, I told you guys, no matter what happened this season, I'm just going to come out here and do my best. Um, I did it for the fans. Uh, they really wanted me to, to do one more season. Um, so I came out here and I did my best. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I worked hard. I'm definitely disappointed that I didn't win. Um, no one's going to be happy that they didn't win. I'm um, disappointed about that, but the good thing, I knew that I came out here and I gave my all, so I'm happy about that. Question there? Yes. Uh, Wait for the mic, please. Thank you. And your name and organization? Uh, Yann Bouches, uh, Le Monde newspaper, French newspaper. Um, now, after this race, do you want to run maybe one year or two years or three years more? It, it doesn't change anything, you know what I mean? Um, for me, um, I think I, I, I lost the race to a great competitor. Um, I came third to a young kid that's coming up. He, he has a great, great talent, a great future ahead of me, ahead of him. So, um, no regrets. You know what I mean? As I said, I came out here, did my best, and um, I was always gonna end no matter what happened, win, lose, or draw. I was always gonna walk away because it doesn't change anything in my career. I've, I've done all I can do for the sport and for myself. So it's time to go. Question in the front row here. Uh, James Sullivan, running review. Question for you, saying, just in light of this defeat, do you think maybe looking back, you regret maybe not going for the 200 meters as well? No, nah, it probably wouldn't work. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not in the shape to run the 200 meters right now. Uh, as you can see in 100, uh, my start is bad, and I'm sure 
the last 50 of my 200 meters would be bad also. So I'm in no shape. Um, all I was training for this year was a uh, hundred. Um, it was a rough season. It was up and down and, uh, lost my friend this year. And so it's just been rough. You know what I mean? Uh, and as Justin know, um, it's hard when you when you're old it's hard to get back from injuries you know what i mean and i've been through this year after year and year so it's just time for me to just pack it up question right there <coughs> yes oh question for your your son i'm from china check in field king i have taken the course this is uh 2008 you won in beijing so have you ever remember the first your first individual event in your career and what is the most memorable competition in your career. Thank you. For me, of course, everybody remembers Beijing, you know what I mean? Uh, it was one, it was where it all started for me, you know what I mean? So it was, it was big. And for me, every race that I ran, I ran up to this day, has been important to my career um, to prove who I am as a person, as an athlete. So for me, all of them are important. Lady over here, please. Hi, Valerie from Atlanta News. Justin, um, beating Usain in his final race, was it something you wanted to get done on a big championship? And, and what inspired you to, to bow? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, um, even if I wasn't here, Christian put on a great show, you know, to get that silver. Um, you know, you don't get to see <clears throat> a, young, a young guy who's been through the whole collegiate season and um, still be able to run as fast as he did and, and and dominate through the rounds like he did. Um, but for me, I think we all, we all, when we get to the starting line, we all want to win. The true competitor wants to win, you know? Yeah, you have one or two in there who are just happy to be there. But, you know, the real ones who line up, they want to win. And um, um, I've had many races with Usain. And um, through all my races, you know, it was never bitter. He actually has helped me learn how to be a better athlete. Uh, to be a stronger man, and you know, I have nothing but the much utmost respect for him. Uh, gentleman here. <coughs> um, Elias from uh, Daily Nation in Kenya. You said, "Well done for a great career." How do you get from the fast lane, literally, next week um, into normal life? All the hard training. Uh, maybe back to cricket or sometime <laughs> with your cheetah in Kenya? <laughs> For me, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know what I mean, to just live normal, you know what I mean, just <coughs> to get up and know that I have no training for once. Uh, I can just do what I want. Um, I'm excited about that. I'm going to miss the sports for sure, but I want to. I get a chance to live now and do what I want and travel when I want, so it's excited about that. I don't know where my, my career will go. Or what I'll do, but I look forward to it. And I know the person I am, it's going to be something exciting, and I will do it at my best. Gentleman here, please. Um, this is to Justin. Congratulations. Um, Usain is just finishing his career. You, you, you seem to have like two or three careers. Where are you, where are you heading from, from now? Is, uh, <laughs> uh, is this the, the peak of your third or second career? How do you regard this? Uh, man, I, I really don't know. I'm just taking it race by race. You know what I mean? Um, I really don't know. I mean, my son would like to go to Tokyo 2020. He talked to me about it. Um, hopefully, I can take him as an athlete. But if I don't, I still take him as support staff. <laughs> but, you know, um, like you said, as you become an older athlete, you know, you just got to really pick and choose where you're going to run, you know, how you're going to run, how fast you're going to compete, you know, and that's all I'm focused on right now, just race by race. Um, the, the elephant in the room, what, what about the booze? What about the, 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 the articles that painted you as the villain of, uh, of uh, athletics? I you mean, cope with that? you know, at the end of the day, um, I really didn't focus on the booze tonight. Throughout all my rounds, I kind of just – zoned in on my on my lane um i know it's kind of sad that my boos are a little louder than other people's cheers you know but you know i wanted to keep it classy and just at the end of the race <clears throat> i bent knee for uh for usain and paid homage to him and that's what it is i mean this night is still a magical night you know for track and field and for usain bolt i mean he's done so much for the career and I'm just happy to be one of his biggest competitors. Am I, am I one of your biggest <laughs> That's all I wanted to be, man. Just a big competitor, man. <laughs>
Right at the back, please. Um, a question for Usain and for Justin. What would you say to the people who see Justin's victory tonight as a disaster for the sport of athletics? Uh, for me, uh, over the years, I've always said, listen, um, he's done his time, you know what I mean? Uh, and if he's here, that means it's, it's okay, you know what I mean? I've always respected him as a competitor over the years. He's, he's worked hard, and I've always said that he's one of the best competitors I've ever competed with. I know that if I don't show up, he's always going to win, and tonight he showed up. He was a better man tonight, and he came out, and he executed well. So for me, um, he deserves to be here because he's done his time and he he works hard to to get back to be one of the best athletes and he's working hard. You can see it because of the, throughout his his career he's been back. He's worked hard. He's ran fast times. He's been injured. He's and he's back and he's doing great. So for me, I look at him just like any other athlete and a competitor. Question. Uh, I mean. I will. I wasn't really focused on the booze, you know, um, or thinking of it, if my my win tonight was a disaster. I, I really did it for my fans, my support staff, you know, and my countrymen, uh, people who really believed in me, you know, when I didn't believe in myself. And um, when I stepped on the line for the uh, on the line start line, um, <clears throat> this is the first time I ever ran a race, and I wasn't thinking about I wasn't really thinking about myself. I was thinking about them, and it took the pressure away from me. Just go out there and run, compete. Run to the finish line. Now, that's all I really did. Christian, uh, what's going through your mind tonight? I mean, is this kind of a surreal experience, or what are you thinking? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a surreal experience. Uh, this whole season for me has been surreal. Um, it's been a long season. I'm happy to cap it off like this. You know, I'm, I'm sitting up here on the, a podium with Usain Bolt and, and Justin Gatlin, you know, guys I've looked up to, you know, my whole my whole life. So, you know, I'm just, you know, extremely happy to be here um, and, and blessed. And like you said, it definitely is a surreal feeling. Um, we have a microphone for Vicky, please. Hi, it's a question for Justin. I just wondered if you can understand why people are antagonistic towards you after what happened and the whole Trevor Graham saw. I, I spoke to Angel many times. Can, can you just at least understand why I don't, years later? I, I really don't need to understand. I mean, <laughs> my thing is, I wasn't booed in 10. I wasn't booed in 2011. I wasn't booed in 12 here. I wasn't booed in 13, I wasn't booed in 14 or 15, but now I'm booed. So at the end of the day is, if anything, I can understand the rivalry that I have with Usain, but there's not a bitter rivalry. You know, I respect the man utmost, and, I, and every time we come across the finish line, I've shaken his hand, I've given him a hug, and I told him congratulations, and that's all that really matters to me. I'm just a runner, like anybody else that's sitting up here, I'm just a runner, and I'm back in the sport. I've done my time, like he said, and I've come back, I've did community service, I've talked to kids, I've actually inspired kids, you know, to m walk the right path. And that's all I can do. Society does that with people who, who had mistakes, and I hope that track and field can understand that too. We're just trying to have a cooperative from a society. So that's why I'm still back in the sport, that's why I'm still running, and that's why I believe in myself 100%. Question right there, please. Hi, uh, Justin, you spoke about injuries you had earlier this year. I'm wondering, could you give us a rundown of the timeline, what the issues were, and was there ever a moment where you doubted that this would become a reality? Uh, yeah, back in um, April, I, um, I got like a hip flexor injury when I first started doing speed work, and um, it put me down for about two weeks. And then trying to come back off of that, I got a calf injury. Um, from the overcompensation of trying to run. So it put me down for like another week. And I mean, when you saw me running at Olympic trial, I mean, uh, nationals, and then running a couple races after that, it was kind of just off guts, man, and just running a, ra a race pattern that I was just used to running and just trying to get to the finish line first. Question in the middle there. Uh, the winning time today was the slower for a gold medalist since 2000, uh, 2003. I would like to, and the marks in general, they were much slower than the last edition of the World Championship. I would like to know from you guys if you think there is any 
kind of relationship with a stronger anti-doping control. Whoa, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> hold on, hold on, what, 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 you, what is she saying? <laughs> I heard you, but I'm saying yeah. what? Well, in this season, uh, in the whole, and also we have here in the World Championship, slower times, much slower. We have, I think, 21 sub-10 times in Beijing World Championship, and in this edition, less than 10. I would like to understand why, and if you I mean, think there is any kind of relationship with a stronger anti-doping anti control. First of all, I'm sure everybody up here take that very disrespectful. You know what I mean? Uh, I prove, we prove, we've worked hard. As I said, Justin has, doing, has done his time throughout the years, and he's proven himself over and over again. I've proven myself over and over again. The young kid just coming in, Coleman, has done great, and he's performing himself to, to show the world that he's, he's going to be a great athlete. It's something called injury, and sometimes everything don't go as smoothly as you want to. You know what I mean? There's negative wind. There's so much different things. So for you to just directly say something or state something to all three of us like that, I take that disrespectful, you know what I mean? Because we've done so much great things throughout the years. Yes, it's slow, but we came out there and we put on a good show for everybody, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Wow. I mean, do, any, do, do you want to respond to that as well? I mean, you, you have to understand, like, as athletes, regardless of what the sport is, we are human beings still. We still have to perform. You know what I mean? We still work hard. We still train every day. When you guys are sitting typing on your computers, <laughs> we're throwing up at practice. <laughs> we get injuries and sprains. You know what I mean? So, of course, sometimes our time's not going to be the best. And obviously, everybody up here wish they could run a personal best every time they step on the track. But, you know, we push ourselves to the best we can do. And tonight, that was the best that the world can give. You know, and we, we still made it the most exciting race that you can, you've seen probably all year, you know, and, and it was so close. So, I mean, I don't think it's uh, an algorithm to, you know, uh, anti-doping issue. I just think that it's just a hard work. I mean, this guy had a long season. He's at literally almost ran almost a whole year. You know, Christian's ran since December. You know, it's almost December again, you know. So, I mean, for him to be able to come up here and get on the podium, grab a medal, that had nothing to do with it. That's just, that was fortitude. That was a lot of heart, and that was a lot of guts out there. And the same thing with you saying. He has injury he's been running. He's been giving you guys the best performances of his life and over and over again. You know, and, and I've been right there with him trying to be able to perform and be right next to him. So I don't think it has anything to do with that. I just think that we just are hardworking athletes, and sometimes they don't go the way we want it to go. Jen, did you want to add anything further? Oh, no, I think they, they pretty much said it all. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's another question at the back. Hello, Jordan Jarrett Bryan from Channel 4 News. Um, Usain Bolt, um, you acknowledge that your start isn't the best. Is that because of the way that you're made up and the way you're built? So you've got, you're a tall man with long legs, or is it because you've not found the technique to better that start? And secondly, is there a Jamaican athlete coming through who excites you? <laughs> uh, I, I really don't know what to say about my side. This is the first time in the championship that I've gone through the round and it, it's been so poor. Normally, uh, I always get my start at some point, you know what I mean? Um, in, 2015, in 2015, when it was, it was one of the roughest seasons, most competitive for me and Justin, I actually got a good start, you know what I mean? But it always comes together in the finals. This has been one of my worst. Uh, I was going through the, the, the mix zone, the media zone, and I looked at my reaction, and it was 186. And I was like, 186? You know what I mean? Coleman was 123. I was like, what? That's impossible. You know what I mean? That's how quick he is. Justin was like 140-something. And it shows that these, I was way off. You know what I mean? I knew from the start if I didn't get in to the race, then I'll be in trouble. But it's just one of those things. You know what I mean? So start matters. didn't come together. But I try not to blame one thing. I, I came out here. I gave it my best. And it was just not good enough. Just a couple more questions this evening. One over there. Justin, in 2015, the BBC commentator said Usain had saved athletics by beating you. What do you say to them tonight that you've beaten them here in <laughs> London, in, in the home of the BBC? I, I don't know. I have, I have no comment to that. I'm just, I'm just here. I'm happy I'm here. Um, tonight is not going to be spoiled. Usain is a great athlete, a great man. You know, um, 
I'm just happy to be able to line up against him throughout the years, shoulder to shoulder with him, regardless win or lose. Um, now, I mean, you would think the headache is gone, but now you got Christian Coleman <laughs> in the mix now. So um, the rivalry will still continue and the excitement will still continue in the sport. Usain leaves a, a very huge void, you know, with his character and his athleticism, but there's going to be a lot of young athletes who going to step up to the okay, table. Okay, but you just seem to enjoy being the bad boy of the sport. You seem Me? to enjoy <laughs> what, what the do, All right, here, here's my question to you. What do I do that makes me the bad boy? Do I talk bad about anybody? Do I, do I give bad gestures? I don't. Do I shake every athlete's hand. I congratulate them. I tell them good luck. I don't, that don't sound like a trait of a bad boy to me. It just seems like the, the media wants to sensationalize and makes me the bad boy because you're saying he's a hero, and that's fine. You know what I mean? I, I know you got to have a black hat and a white hat, but guys, come on, man. You know, you guys know I, I keep it classy. I've never talked bad. And you guys who give me one-on-one -on -one interviews, you know, I try to inspire other athletes, and I just try to stay in my lane, literally. That's it. So I don't see where the bad boy comes from. Okay. Can we have one final question there? Man, just over here, please. Final question. My name is Ayo Dumade, African Sports Monthly. Congratulations to all of you. Justin, do you think that some of the British media are being disrespectful to you? I want you to be honest with your answer. <laughs> I mean, I figure you didn't want me to lie to you. <laughs> um, I don't know. I really haven't focused on that. My, my job is just to be an athlete, man, to be honest. You know what I mean? Um, You're not honest, though. <laughs> be honest. <laughs> <laughs> if I focus on that, then I wouldn't be able to focus on my race, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. IDK. IDK. I don't know. Okay. I think that's enough for this evening. Thank you, Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, medalists. <laughs>